Hello, I'm Peter Bagg. I'm a contributor to Reason Magazine, and I've been doing alternative humor and satirical comics, self-employed, uh, for the last 30-odd years. The Hate was the name of a comic book I did almost exclusively, and by exclusively I meant that's almost all I worked on throughout the 1990s, that pretty much followed the adventures and misadventures of a semi-autobiographical character named Buddy Bradley. And it's what I'm by far the best known for. Well, I define myself as a libertarian, and I've always felt that way and thought that way even before I knew there was a word for it. When I was younger, I was very surprised to learn that this was a unique worldview and that there was a word for it, simply because I couldn't believe that so many people don't believe in freedom. I remember talking to my parents about the draft, reproductive rights, things like that, whatever was in the news at the time. You know, it's not like they were hardcore right-wingers. They weren't, they were very moderate in their political views. I just thought it was like these crazy others that wanted to shove their world feud down other people's throats and to use the force and the weight of government to keep people from doing stuff that they don't like, even though it's not doing them any harm. So yeah, eventually I learned that there was a word for it and that we were considered weird. <laughs> Being a cartoonist, I'm part of the overall artistic community and, and most people in the art world tend to lean left. And it's the prevailing worldview, it's the prevailing group think. So that people, whether you're libertarian or just plain old right wing, most people who feel that way, they wind up keeping quiet just because they don't want to be criticized and jumped on. If I'm talking one-on-one -on -one and explain myself, they usually could see where I'm coming from and understand it and appreciate it. But then once they're away from me and they're talking to other fellow leftists or progressives, they, if I, my name comes up, they snap right back to basically labeling me a right winger. That everything is black and white. You're for us or against us. You're either a left winger or a right winger. And they keep throwing me in the other camp, even though socially I'm as liberal as you could get. Just because I'm not in lockstep with them. They, amongst themselves, they're always calling me a right winger, which is really annoying. <laughs> that that pisses me off because it isn't true. And uh, but I've just gotten used to it. I don't know what else to say. You know, it used to give me fits, but I've just gotten used to that. How I wound up working for a reason? I was working for a website called Suck Suck dot com, and then Suck went out of business. But many of their contributors worked for Reason Magazine, so it seemed like it was a natural thing for me to do something similar for Reason Magazine that I was doing for Suck, which mainly was covering an event, doing my own comic book style reporting on the whole thing. It's like cartoon journalism. The most recent piece I did for Reason, it was about a minimum security women's prison. It didn't change my feelings about the drug war. Personally, I feel like all drugs should be decriminalized because every single woman I talked to there were, was in prison, at least partly for drugs. Either they were caught holding or selling it or else they were stealing or prostituting themselves to pay for drugs. But still, what made the situations so complicated is that a lot of those women felt like the jail was the best thing that could have happened to them. They couldn't imagine kicking drugs besides going to prison. Of course, nine times out of ten, they get, go back on drugs once they get out. Most of them, I can't give you a percentage, but let's say 90%, come for, from a world where... Uh, Going in and out of prison, being on welfare, just being wards of the state to some degree is the norm, not just for themselves and not just for their families, but these entire communities they live in. It's this other part of America that, thankfully, I'm not a part of, but almost all of these women are. Right now, I have to say, it does seem to be a scary time politically and with the state of the economy and, and the government being bankrupt. I can't help but feel pessimistic about what's going to happen next, especially since, God, the last 10 years, every bad thing that happened, I pretty much predicted. But then I have to say there have been times in the past where I, also, where I was even more convinced that things were going to get worse. I can remember when the 90s started. For some reason, I was convinced the 90s were going to be worse than the 80s. But they were better, which surprised me. They were better in almost every way, at least in my opinion. You know, so then I just got lazy and naturally assumed that the, the aughts would be better than the 90s, and they weren't. They were worse. <laughs>